Many people see British landscapes as a mere dull green haze in comparison to the far off and fantastical tropical lands that are so frequently broadcast on television. But actually within our own British wild landscapes are an, lies an enormous array of plant life and some exceptional peculiarities. And it's these peculiar species and their relationships that we'll be taking a look at in this short documentary entitled Brilliant British Botany. Well, I'm here today in an ancient woodland in Clitheroe to see one particular amazing plant now plants, by definition, are almost inexplicably related to one key chemical process, that is photosynthesis. It's what makes the leaves green, uh, whereby plants produce sugars by processing carbon dioxide and water. This particular plant doesn't conform to such a definition, and it's about 100 yards that way, so let's go and see it. And this is it. It's called toothwort, and not one part of it is green. It is out without chlorophyll, that is to say it's achlorophyllous. And what it does is it attaches its roots as a parasite to the, the roots of trees in the, in the vicinity. In this case, this big mature ash behind me. And what it does then is it sucks up the nutrients for its own use. Now, not many species on Earth of plant have adapted in such fantastic way to be parasites as this one has. And this particular species, common toothwort, uh, is almost completely associated with ancient woodlands as this one is. It's a fantastic thing. Around 15 or so species of completely parasitic plant in the UK, like toothwort is. But I'm here to look at something rather different. If toothwort was the equivalent of a burglar, then this plant or group of plants would be the equivalent of petty thieves, and these are the semi parasites. And I'm surrounded by them, or at least one species, and this is it. It's called yellow rattle. In similarity with toothwort, all of these semi-parasites are able to tap into the root systems of other plants in the adjacent vicinity. But unlike toothwort, they are chlorophyllous, they are green, they're able to produce their own sugars. Now, this gives semi-parasites a real competitive advantage over complete parasites like toothwort. This means that the semi-parasites are not only able to reduce the growth of the, the competitive species in the immediate vicinity, but it also means that they're able to grow a heck of a lot faster. And that is probably the reason that there's about twice as many semi-parasites than there are parasites, and they tend to be a lot more common too. Parasitism is just one of many peculiar adaptations employed by a limited suite of plants in Britain to gain some kind of competitive advantage. However, I'm here today on, an, on a peat bog in northwest England to look at an entirely different group of plants, and these are the hunters, the carnivores. Now, these kinds of peat bogs are known for being exceptionally nutrient poor, wet, and acid. And so, to survive in these inhospitable environments, plants need to come up with ever more inventive ways to survive in them. And these sundews below me here have evolved such an inventive strategy in order to tolerate an otherwise inhospitable environment. Each leaf is characterised by a coating of tubular hairs, each tipped with a gland that produces sticky, digestive mucus. As soon as an invertebrate lands or walks over this sticky ooze produced by the sundew, it's very much doomed. Once ensnared by the sundew, it then begins to wrap its tentacles around its prey, engulfing it in a mass of digestive mucus, quickening the breakdown of animal tissue. 
Carnivorous plants are typically associated with these boggy terrestrial environments. But actually amongst the most fascinating groups of carnivorous plants are the bladderworts and in Britain they are completely aquatic. Small yellow flowers of lesser bladderwort conceal what's really going on underneath the water and underneath this sphagnum moss. If we take a closer look under this bog pool, this is what you'll see. Small aquatic filamentous plants. Lining each of these filamentous green leaves, these small bladder-like traps. Now each trap is able to catch a small aquatic invertebrate, and this is what makes the bladderwort so fascinating. Each trap triggers within one ten thousandth of a second, and that's what makes these bladderworts amongst the fastest group of plants on earth. Competition in extreme environments are amongst many factors that may drive some plants to savagery, to parasitism, to carnivory. But that isn't to say that some plants cannot be amicable. In fact, over 90% of all plant species on Earth have a particularly close-knit bond to one other group of organisms entirely, and they are the fungi. One group of plants whose relationship to fungi is particularly pronounced are the orchids, and I'm here on the Sefton coast today to look at just a couple of over 50 species of orchid that are present in the British Isles. And here they are, an absolute mat of marsh hellebrine orchids. As well as looking spectacular, these marsh hellebrine orchids would not be here without their fungal symbiotic associate. From germination to continued survival, all orchid species have a strong reliance upon these fungi to secure nutrients from the soil and occasionally also nutrients from other plants in the vicinity. Absolutely astounding things. <laughs> there are over 3,000 vascular plant species that inhabit the British Isles. And I hope I've shown you in a very short period of time why British botany is indeed brilliant. Thank you very much for watching.